Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about recruiting and workforce. So besides people who are very good at synchronizing clocks, <laughs> um, what are you looking for? And maybe you could give us an example of a, a really great hire you've made in the past few years that you think has been really instrumental in helping you effectively move data forward, data analysis forward in your industry. And, and more generally, are you going out looking for PhDs in statistics, undergraduate degrees in computer science, um, undergraduate degrees in political science? What, what, what are you looking for in, in recruiting? I, I can start. And we. Um I can think of a great hire that we made has a hardcore background in statistics. So he's got a PhD in statistics um, and a comp sci background as well. So he's got a very good blend. He has a, a really good interpersonal skill set so he can go and talk to customers and, and really help dive in. And I think that's been a great thing is that he's somebody who we can put out into the field as well. And he can sit down and help slice and dice and talk to the data folks at our customer sites. Um, as well as academic institutions. So we also work with Carnegie Mellon and Wharton on some of the programs and some of the things that we're doing, and we're expanding what we're doing with UT. But a lot of it, the, a PhD in stats, any kind of stats background is huge. Um, and you marry that to computer science and to complete win. Yeah, we, I, I'd, I'd say we have had a pretty diverse set of backgrounds sort of contribute strongly. Um, I'm back to my all of the above answer again. I happen to be a political science major myself. I feel like I feel like I was a decent hire. Um, auto Wait, didn't you hire yourself? I did. I did. It was a loaded decision. Um, but uh, but literally, undergraduates in CS, if they are uh, again appropriately oriented around sort of creative problem solving, can be tremendous sort of raw material for this kind of work. And for us, we're trying to build. Uh, workflows that have a blend of the variety of skill sets that have been described here. So PhDs in quantitative analysis uh, can be for us a very useful and necessary part of that process. But if that's all you have and if there's too much of a research orientation there, yeah. I found generally that people uh, who are great at that kind of work often have a very hard time with the concept of 80-20 and something is good enough to go ahead and move on and do something, do the next thing, solve the next problem. Uh, by definition, they're super rigorous and always want to perfect. Uh, and so that blend of sort of how do we productize and build things for production versus uh, go too deep in research. Um, on the flip side, you know, I was really psyched to hear people have problems that I don't have. The, the speed problem you guys have is a function of the industry you're in. My, my industry makes decisions on like five and seven year cycles. So we, <laughs> I don't need better computers to beat their <laughs> decision timing. Mm -hmm. our, so the majority of our hires are engineers, being that, that we're a utility. But I found that within my group, the, the engineers that we have are actually most effective when they've got some kind of statistics background. Um, because they're able to think a little bit differently and come up with that different type of modeling or that different approach to the problem um, that just seems to work. But, uh, you know, the whole 80-20 thing, I love this one engineer in my group because nothing is right. It's just the least wrong. We're going to find the least wrong thing. And I'm finally okay with that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we're... It's, I think we're all probably going to end up third, third and fourth down the row and say it's the same thing as everyone else said. Um, we're looking for people that can, it, the statistics is important. We have a lot of engineers. We are an engineering company, and so we end up getting a lot of engineers, and, and I'm in IT, and so we get computer science as a background that we're looking for with that. Um, but the most important thing, if I'm going to put somebody on my data problems as opposed to managing my Teradata system, then... Um, I, I want somebody who can understand a business. And they don't even have to understand mine when they walk in, but they have to be able to understand the business problem and, and the business need for what they're doing. Right? Somebody who's going to sit and, and be the you know, nth degree of perfect statistics is great if I need somebody to develop a model, but usually I need an 80% and I need them to be able to go sit with the guy who designed the chip or with the marketing guy who's trying to sell it and be able to explain what the data says. And, and that's vastly more important. Mm -hmm. We tend to hire people with a very you know, scientific and quantitative background. A lot of people assume that because we're a trading firm that we have finance graduates. And we actually hire very, very few people with any kind of uh, you know, financial background. We tend to hire people with very good statistical skills, but they may or may not have had a formal background in statistics. It may have been other sciences. It may have been uh, physics or math or you know, often computer science. We have a lot of very 
um, strong candidates in computer science, particularly machine learning backgrounds. You know, it all starts to converge at a certain point. You know, so we look for people with very good academic, you know, skills and quantitative skills, but ultimately the personality traits also get, you know, become really important. And, you know, for us, I think there's a sort of per particular kind of, you know, demented person who likes to be wrong in every good idea that they have. And that's, you know, that's something that's sort of, and not get discouraged. And that's something that's, uh, you know, very challenging for us is to find someone who will come up with 99 good ideas that none of them which work and are still excited to come into work the next day and, the, you know, the off chance that they come up with that hundredth good idea that actually works the, the following day. So for us, it's a creativity, it's a persistence um, on top of some very good quantitative statistical and um, computing skills. I think, you know, that's something that's um, been mentioned a lot here on the panel. I think in all of our businesses, the tool sets aren't so mature that you can just plug, you know, a random smart person in front of uh, a mature tool and say, go do your job. Um, people still need to develop their own work environments and their workflows and their processes, and that still requires pretty uh, good capabilities within you know, various computing environments.